And joining us now on Encounter is Francisco Perez, who's a business development project manager in West Africa. Thank you so much uh, for Catholic Relief Services, uh, Francisco, for being with us today. No, thank you for having me. And we're going to talk uh, specifically about uh, the Ebola um, outbreak that's taking place in the region that you're involved in. And maybe if you could take us uh, back, I know that you had to leave at, at one point. Tell us a little bit about the, the beginnings of this and how it all sort of started to develop. So there, again, there was a first reported case of, of Ebola in Guinea in March. Um, it's the first reported case of Ebola this far uh, north and west in, in, in Africa. This is the first time we've seen this in this region. And um, in the border area between, between Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. And it, was soon, it soon spread to, to Sierra Leone and, and Liberia. There have also been cases in Nigeria and Senegal, but those are smaller outbreaks. The, the, really the, the heart of the crisis now is in, is, is in Guinea, Sierra Leone, and Liberia, where we've seen cases grow from a handful to you know, and, and, and now an exponential rate. Um, and the situation has become quite, quite critical. And, and talk about, I know you're not a doctor, uh, uh, but for people that hear it here in this country too, might not understand, they, they know, they've heard Ebola, but uh, what exactly is it and how is it spread? So it's a hemorrhagic fever um, and you know, it, it leads to bleeding, vomiting, um, you know, a a, the worst fever you've probably had in your life. Right. Um, but it is transmitted through contact with body fluids. You know, it's, it's not like the flu, um, you know, it doesn't, or, or cholera, it's not transmitted by air or water. You know, you have to f come into physical contact with someone who is expressing symptoms of the disease at the time. Okay. Um, so it is contagious in that sense, but it isn't, um, you know, it, 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 you don't need to, you actually need to be co in contact with this person. Okay. And it, you know, has traditionally had a very high fatality rate. Um, this outbreak is different, but we're still seeing about 50 to 60 percent of people um, who contract the disease die. Now, CRS is on the ground already in, in West Africa and, and many places around the world. But uh, talk about um, some of the immediate needs, I guess, uh, that CRS needs and, and the, the partners that they uh, work with in this region too. What are some of the more immediate needs to help control this and, and to get things under order? So CRS is, is, is working with uh, the Catholic Church and other partners you know, with the governments in these countries to um, do the best we can to warn, prevent. You know, we feel like that the emphasis should be on prevention, which is why the, the the bulk of our work is in uh, an information education campaign. We try to teach people, um, get messages out there about how the disease is spread, how they can prevent it. There's a lot of misinformation, a lot of myths, a lot of superstitions around the disease itself. So we try to combat some of those and, 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 and encourage people to seek treatment because even though there is no cure, there is no vaccine and there is no cure, treatment does help. It has helped people survive. And there are you know, now hundreds of survivors. So we, we're, we're doing that. Um, we focus on contact tracing, so we make sure that all of those people who may have come into contact with someone who is infected and may not be possibly infected themselves are properly quarantined, that they themselves have access to health care, um, and they receive some sort of support for themselves and their families facing this you know, very scary disease. And then the, the third thing we're doing you know, in, in the short term is providing Catholic health facilities especially with per personal protective equipment to make sure that the doctors and, and nurses um, are not putting themselves at risk. I mean, these are the, they're people who, who treat patients with Ebola are those at highest risk of contracting the disease itself, right? So, so we've lost a ton of doctors and, and nurses already. We're trying to do the best that we can to make sure that um, our doctors and nurses are not putting themselves at risk. Um, we've seen many hospitals have to close. Um, we've, we've, you know, several of our Catholic hospitals have had to close, for example, because they can't ensure the safety of their staff. So we want to make sure they can get them up and running. Um, and in the long term, we want to focus on strengthening these health systems to make sure that in the future, if there are other outbreaks um, of Ebola or, or similarly infectious diseases, that you know, the systems will be able to take care of them on their own um, and, and not um, face the same challenges they're facing now where, where there's shortages of, of trained personnel and equipment. Yeah, and you, we were talking before, uh, we uh, talked here on Encounter, but uh, you were mentioning the uh, process that it involves and all the material it needs to happen for these people, you know, burning clothes, uh, you know, get ready when you bury someone, you have to burn your clothes and uh, all the materials that's needed uh, in terms of, you know, providing for the healthcare workers and all those um, who are helping out. Talk about where people, or what can people do uh, to help out CRS and, and, and make this a little bit easier and getting the uh, supplies to them. Well, CRS is going, is, is procuring um, 
a large an amount of protect of personal protective equipment to make you know gowns, um, masks, gloves, uh, to make sure that we can we can get these Catholic health facilities back up and running. And you know you can go on our uh, go on our website crs.org where we have a special Ebola appeal where we're you know asking Catholics ar around the world to to stand in solidarity with our brothers and sisters in West Africa and, and help them in this time of need. Um, we can really, you know, too many people have already died unnecessarily and, and, and if we act urgently now, we can, you know, save lives. And it's not just Ebola, it's, you know, th th without, um, if we can't get these health systems back up and running, people are gonna be dying of all kinds of other diseases that are now going untreated because people are either scared to go to the hospital or nurses and, and, and doctors can't safely practice. So, you know, we have, we're gonna be seeing a lot of indirect deaths due to you know, Ebola, of people dying of malaria and other diseases that are easily pre treated or preventable because the health system is collapsing. So please uh, do what you can, go on CRS.org and donate. Yeah, well, we thank you, Francisco, for being with us and uh, we wish you all the best and continued work. It's some very powerful work that you're doing and uh, we wish you all the best and hopefully people will be able to supply some uh, funds, much needed funds for CRS and for the people of West Africa. So thank, thanks for being with us. Yeah, thank you for your time.